Today I want to demonstrate the All Traffic Solutions Speed Alert Speed Dependent Messaging System. This is the most flexible traffic calming system in the industry. The components of the system are the Inst Alert, Rapid Messenger, Folding Variable Message Sign, and the Speed Sentry Radar Speed Display. These components are mounted on our ATS-5 trailer. The Speed Alert Speed Dependent Messaging System allows you to customize the messages relative to how fast the vehicle is passing the sign. And it has five different ranges of speed. One is for no vehicles. One is for vehicles that are going less than or equal to the speed limit, so you might say, have a nice day. And then you have three ranges above the speed limit. And each range can get more dramatic with the message. For example, some departments put different fine levels on for different ranges above the speed limit. Others might say, slow down, slow down now, pull over for the officer ahead. Being able to tailor your message to the actual speed of the driver allows the system to be much more effective than just a general slow down message to any vehicle passing the sign, no matter what speed limit they're going. There are several components to the speed alert speed dependent messaging system. The first is the Inst Alert variable message sign. This sign actually folds in half and weighs about 40 pounds. It can be used on the trailer, or it can be used on a hitch mount, or it can be used on a portable post. The second component is the Speed Sentry radar speed display. The system includes the batteries so that the speed sentry can be taken off of the trailer when it's not used as part of the speed alert system. It can be used in a neighborhood and hung on any of your existing poles and utilize the internal battery to traffic calm. The system typically comes with the solar panel, which will charge the batteries in the ATS-5 trailer. We're setting up the All Traffic Solutions Speed Alert trailer in a neighborhood for traffic calming. I brought the trailer into the position where I want to traffic calm, and I have the jacks down and I have the trailer level. My first step is to raise the solar into position. To raise the solar, I pull the pin on the locking pin and loosen the wing nut on either side of the solar panel. I tip it up and put these locks back into position. Now that we have the solar panel in position, the next step is to raise the installer message sign. I undo the retainer clips on either side of the upper portion of the trailer, and then I pull up on the handle and replace the retainer pins on both sides. You may actually have to lift up just a little bit to pull the retainer pin into place. Now the message board is in position. I now have the trailer in position with the Instalert message board in position. My next step is to turn the Instalert on. To turn on the Instalert, I plug the Instalert plug into the receptacle on the trailer. There's an insert indicator on the plug that goes where the triangle is on the receptacle. I plug the unit in and now the Instalert is on. Now that the Instalert is in position and displaying my preferred message, I want to secure the trailer. I remove the handle from the trailer and I place it in the bottom of the storage positions inside the trailer. Once I place the handle in the trailer, I can also place the tongue manner. Now I close and lock the lid and the trailer is secure. I now have the installer message sign in position and I'm going to set up the speed sentry radar speed display portion of the speed alert speed conditional messaging system. The first step in setting the speed alert on the trailer is to put the mounting bracket in position on the trailer. To do that I've mounted the speed sentry's mounting plate to the speed alert speed sentry post. I place the post in the receptacle on the trailer and I hold it in position. 
a locking hitch pin. Now that I have my mounting plate in position, my next step is to mount the speed sentry. I take the speed sentry, and I push it onto the mounting bolts on the mounting plate. I open up the speed sentry while holding the back of the unit in position. And I put the four wing nuts into position to hold the speed sentry onto its mounting plate. Now that I have all the wing nuts in position, it's now time to power the speed sentry. I've run the power cord through the hole in the bottom of the battery enclosure and I plug it into the receptacle on the bottom of the speed sentry. Turning on the switch in the battery enclosure turns the speed sentry unit on. It'll go through its startup routine and then it'll start to communicate with the installer. Let me show you the interior components of a Speed Sentry radar speed display. This is the radar unit. This is the cable for downloading data. It's a serial cable with a DB9 connector. You may need to use a USB converter to connect it to a laptop without a DB9 connector. This is your power inlet. You can take the power in directly from a battery that you may have on your shelf or from the external trailer power connection. This is the menu display that corresponds to the onboard controls. When you've turned the unit on using the power button, you have the home screen that tells you which radar mode you're in. It tells you how full your data is. It tells you how charged your battery is. It tells you your average speed since the last time the unit's been turned on. And it tells you the time of day. If I press the setting button, my first setting is the mode. I can have radar on always, so it'll always display speeds. I can have a speed limit sign displaying a single speed. I can go into demo mode just to have a display. And then I can put the radar on timer so that I can have the unit on only during two specific time periods during the day. This is a power saving function. So I'm going to leave it on radar on always. My next setting is my posted speed limit that I just set using the arrow keys to the speed limit for my zone. My next setting is the maximum speed displayed, which I set to a reasonable speed so that people will not race the sign. If somebody goes by this sign above 40 miles an hour, the display will simply blank out. Next, I set my display trigger, and I can set this to no vehicles. I can set it to speed limit. I can set it to a specific trigger speed. I would hit setting again, and I can actually change the speed at which my display will come on. I next set my strobe trigger, and I can set that to no vehicles, speed limit, trigger speed, or all vehicles. Same with the relay trigger, if I have the relay option. I can set my output display to either constant or blinking. Blinking would be a power saving mode. I can set my current date and time. I can disable or enable my data logging. I can clear the data memory from here. I can output my speed to an inst alert or a speed eye or to none, depending on the options that I have with my speed sentry. And I can also set my radar sensitivity ranging from 1, which is near, to 7, which is far. And then I'm back to the mode for the radar. The speed alert system is the most flexible system in the traffic calming industry. When you need to use the message sign for an event, say an arts festival or a football game, and you don't need it for traffic calming, you can take the speed sentry off of the trailer, 
and you can actually go put it in a neighborhood and traffic calm while the message board is being used as a standard message board.